Hi, I'm Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Last week we made this art journal book with some masking and a large piece from our Kmart watercolour pad, which is massive. You can see the size of it there. It is 29.7 centimetres. Whoops. 29.7 centimetres by 41.9 centimetres. So very large paper. And this is our watercolour. And from that, we made this booklet. If you missed that video, you can go back and find that as lesson one. This is lesson two today. So in lesson one, we did some different washes, different lines using two brushes from Kmart, using the very inexpensive kit, which was a size six round brush. I'm just going to wet that so that it's got a nice point again. Always reshape to a fine point with your brushes and a size 14 flat. And I'm going to use the same two brushes today. I'm going to use my Kmart 2B pencil. So this is the very basic kit. I have my dollar store spray bottle. I'm going to wake up my paints now with that, just by spraying my palette. This is a palette from Micador. I bought this from my local dollar shop. I have a couple of recycled glass jars from the kitchen. And I'm going to show you some more techniques and we're going to do another painting this week using this tree in a full-size painting. We also did this easy flower technique last week. So for this week, we're going to go and do some more simple techniques. So I'm going to start with rectangles again, just very rough rectangles. I want about six rectangles. These are a little bit fatter than the ones I did last time. Just very lightly. And you can see there's a rough side on this side and a smooth side on this side. Some te techniques we're doing will go better on the right side. So I'll save them for the right side of the paper. And then I want to do like a long landscape size rectangle down the bottom for these techniques. Now don't mind my blue brush. These are high staining paints, which is great. It means they're quite opaque and you're going to get lovely bright colors with them, but they do stain the white synthetic ends of your paint brushes. It doesn't ruin the brushes. It just makes them look a bit odd, but it, it's fine. I have some paper towel here. I'm going to quarter it quarters and I'm going to quarter a tissue as well. So I have a tissue, just a plain facial tissue here. I'm going to quarter that as well. Okay. Go wet on wet. So I'm going to paint the rectangle with water like so. Nice purpley colour. Now I want it nice and wet so I'm going to dip my brush in again and get a nice wet color on here and you can see the texture of the paper is coming through so this Kmart paper has a textured side which is interesting to play with it's a little bit like cold pressed paper would be and it has a smooth side over on this side which is something like a hot pressed paper would be and people say to me, well, Vicky, how do I remember what it means? What does cold press mean? What does hot press mean? And I would say, well, when you use a hot iron, it flattens out the fabric. Just think of it in terms of if you have a hot pressed paper, it's been flattened and ironed out so that it's straight without any wrinkles in it. Whereas the cold press still has the texture showing. That's an easy way to remember it. I know that when I first started, I got Quite confused with that terminology. Now we want quite a bit of colour on here so that it will show up. So I'm just getting this a little bit more creamy by adding more water and digging into my palette somewhat. And you can see this is now a nice thick coating. And depending on what paper you're using or what side of the paper you're using, you may need to go over a few times like this just to get the depth of colour that you're after. Now I'm going to bring this up and show you. I'll just cut, clean off my brush. Do not leave your brushes sitting in the water jar or you'll damage the tips of them. Just move that down there. I'm going to show you how wet this is. I'll bring it up to the camera. 
you can see it's not running all over the page but it is glossy you can see that shine on it but when I tip it it's not running it's not running out of that rectangle and that's about how wet you want your paper to be for the salt to activate so I'm going to start off with the biggest salt crystals which is the rock salt and I'm going to put them on the bottom and I'm going to separate them a little bit we'll see what happens there so they're not all globbed in together and then I'm going to use my grinder and I'm going to grind some salt over the top part so it's going to be much finer than if it wasn't ground salt so it's coming out fairly fine you can see how fine that is you need to put the fine salt on the top now this will give us two different effects you'll be able to see what the rock salt does and what the fine salt does get it nice and creamy add some water to your brush in a really creamy mix this time I'm going straight onto dry paper without wetting it first and we'll see what this looks like. So using a flat brush is really easy to fill in the rectangle shapes. You don't really need to be too precise here. It's just giving you an idea of how to control your brush and the amount of pigment that you load onto the brush when you start working. So this one, because there's not water on it, it lays down a lot darker. You may notice I don't need to go over with so many coats on this one. And that's because I've used it on dry paper. I'm going to put my mold on salt flakes on this one. And it's still nice and moist, but not too wet. And I'm going to put the mold on salt flakes at the top. Spread them out a little bit so they're not in a clump. You don't want them too clumpy or you won't get the effect. And then I'm going to use the pink Himalayan salt. I'm going to take the top off the grinder, which I think comes off, it does. That's good. And I'm going to lay that down on the bottom. Look at this pretty colour. It's so cool. It looks like pebbles. And it looks quite dry to me. So if you think it looks a bit too dry, you can just grab your sprayer and give it a spritz. And this will keep the paper a bit moister. Same up the top. Spritz it. Now you've got a bit more water on the paper and we'll see what happens. Now we're going to let that dry. So we're going to get it nice and creamy. Add a little more water. Nice and creamy. You'll notice I'm not doing any colour mixing at this point. This will be a later lesson where I show you how you can mix all the colours you need from just three colours. But for now I'm using these colours straight out of the pan as they are. Now for this, you want it again to be fairly wet, but not to the point where it will be dripping everywhere. You don't want too much water, but it's still not quite wet enough. So I'm going to add another coat and intensify the colors there. And now while it's still wet, clean off my brush and I'm going to add some cling wrap going to tear some off there's no point putting it down flat because you kind of lose some of the effect by doing that but you can squish it around you can move it you can pat it down with your fingers whatever you like another technique which is very similar to this is the wax paper or the non-stick baking paper if you can get wax paper it works even better than this but this is baking paper it has a smooth side and it has a shiny side the shiny side is the side we want to use so for this I'm going to tear some off. so I like to tear it and make sure I have the smooth side down because I'll be picking these up and putting them over the top of that square on the top and as I said wax paper will work really well with this but it's very hard to find. Um, I'm looking for it every time I walk into a supermarket, but 
getting rarer to find these days because there are so many other products coming out that are probably more environmentally friendly. I don't really know. So we've got all these and we've got this shiny side is here, this new side here. We want the shiny side to go down on our piece. I like this lemon yellow colour. I think it's really bright and cheerful. I have a little bit of blue on my brush, so it's it's tinging a little bit green. I don't really mind for this. It's giving me more of a green tone because I didn't clean my brush off completely. Now I'm coming in with clean water and that will clear that palette. Don't get too frustrated if your palettes do get a little bit contaminated with other colours. It's easy enough to just rub over the top of them with clear water and clean them down again. This is looking slightly green, but it's okay. I don't mind it. It's actually tying in nicely with the blue there. So with this one, I'm trying to get the salt off because <laughs> I don't really want salt on this one. Um, it's I want to get it nice and wet deep red colour as well. So I've got a deep red colour here and I'm going to rub that down there. Oh, it's like a brownie red. I like that a lot. You can see it's starting to bleed through. So I've got half brownie red and half yellow like that. And while it's still wet, you're going to put your wax paper down. Press down so it makes a good contact with it so it's not too curling up too much. So I have a little stamping block. I'm just going to put that on there to weight it down so it's getting some good contact. If yours doesn't curl up, you don't need this. The next trick I'm going to use is crayon resist. So I have a white crayon here, like a sun. So it's going to be a circle. and it's going to be a sunset, so it's coming out over the water. Very hard to see, but as soon as I put my paintbrush over the top, you're going to see what happens. I'm going to choose a nice blue color. I like the look of this blue here, it's quite a nice one. I want it to be quite pale. So I want a nice pale blue at the top. I want to go for a green, sea green colour, which is sort of like this colour here down the bottom. Lighter with the blue, moving into the green. This is like that double colour, two colour graded wash that we did. And I always like to put a little bit of pink into my sky near the horizon. It's just something that I think is a good trick. So this is the sun setting above the sea. A little bit more pink in there. While this is still wet, I can take a cotton bud and I can pull the blue colour out from the sun. So that's a pure round circle. Make that a bit brighter. A little bit of the papers come off there. There we go. Now it doesn't look much like a sunset yet, but once I put a little boat in there, you will see that it is an absolutely beautiful sunset. I'm just going to sc scrape out some of this and add a little bit more of that blue in. Just give the sky a bit more colour. So we can see the difference between the sky and the sea. And this is a bit darker, so the sun really stands out. There we go. And there's the sun sinking into the sea. Just by using our Crayola 
white crayon and this is called crayon resist and I'm going to use this technique here and I'm going to make a painting on this side you can you can take off some of the tack on your sleeve by running it on your clothing like this it helps to make it less sticky so that when you come to pull it off your paper it doesn't tear the page or it's not as likely to tear the page this is how we create a nice frame border around our pictures same again this time I'm going to take the tack off on my sleeve like that and you could use washi tape for this if you don't have masking tape you can use all kinds of washi tape that would also work it works really well in fact sometimes it's better because it's not quite as tacky and it doesn't tear but we'll see what happens here we'll take put it on my sleeve put it up here and we're going to create a picture with some of these techniques that we've used on this page all right let's wet again Okay, now I'm going to do a mountain sea. I'm washing this across, it's very watery. I'm going to take a marker that has a flat end. I'm going to take a tissue and I'm going to place that over the marker like that. Hold it, keep it flat, keep it nice and flat. And then I'm going to pull out on this side, I'm going to pull out a circle. So that's another way to create a sun. We pull out a large circle. And it's going to be, this is going to be the moon shining down. So that's all I did, I moved it around. This is our moon. And we're going to have some mountains now. The same color blue. And I'm going to get it quite light again. And I'm just going to use my flat brush and I'm going to create some mountains, quite spiky mountains. We'll let those bleed in a little bit. And I'm going to bring them down with more water. And wash them down, wash them down. Keep it wet, keep it wet, keep it wet. Now it's bleeding in a little bit, so I'm going to dry it off with my hairdryer in a second and get sharp edges, but I want this to come all the way down to the bottom of the paper so there's virtually no color left at the bottom. So the whole paper is wet. And this is why it's good to have the tape. It stops the paper from curling up so much. And I'm going to dry off that much with my hair dryer. So I just have a regular hair dryer here and I'm going to dry this off then I'm going to come back in. Lots of water on the brush and I'm just going to sharpen up the edges there with my other brush. So they're not quite so fuzzy. This, this one's kind of leaning over a bit. I'm going to make him a bit craggier. You can see how beautifully the sun is starting to stand out now or the moonlight in those clouds. Now I'm bringing my flat brush because I've got my edges and I'm going to pull that down. And it looks almost like there's distant mountains in the background there. I'm happy to leave those. Now I want to pull the really dark colour out because it's a little bit too dark at the top. So I'm going to pull it all the way down with some water, all the way down. Okay, now I'm going to come in with my the brush and I'm going to pull some of this out and down into the bottom like this. You can keep pulling, keep pulling down and this will pull some of the darker pigment down to the bottom. Keep pulling it down. This gives a lovely definition to that edge 
and you can see there's some pale mountains behind these just a couple of little pale ones and that's lovely you want to make them craggy you don't want to make them all the one kind of summit on them you want them all to be quite craggy now what I notice about mountains and we don't have a lot of mountains in Australia I mean our largest mountain is 7,000 and something feet high it's Mount Kosciuszko it's kind of like a very large hill <laughs> we're not a very mountainous country um, so I'm going to pull that all out this one here just needs a little bit more in there okay and I'm going to lift up that that's getting in the way now I'm going to take that off you can see that plastic wrap's done some really fun things there and clean down the paper a bit it's getting a bit wet on there just clean that down a bit right and I'm going to let this dry with a hairdryer Now we're going to draw some slightly darker mountains in. But as the mountains get closer, they're less craggy. So they're going to be smaller mountain peaks, which is what happens in nature. So let's do the same, same color blue, this time a little bit darker. So I'm going to draw mountain peaks that are not quite so craggy. So this time, I'll bring in my round brush to get a nice point on the edge of them there. I'm going to give them a nice point. Then this one's going to be a little bit rounded. This one's a bit too pointy. I'm going to round him off. This one's going to have a bit of rounding off there. So they've got a little bit more than just pointy shapes to them. They're not as pointy and they don't have as deep valleys in them. So the valleys come up more. So this gives the effect that these mountains are actually closer. They're not as pointed. They're still mountains. Pull all that down with my flat brush. I'm going to pull the colour down. And pull it all to the bottom. So we don't get any harsh lines anywhere. And these are deeper colours than the ones in the background. So you can see we're getting a, a sense of depth there in our painting already. You want to make sure it's wet, otherwise you're going to get some really hard edges there. Okay, so there's our next range of mountains. Now the next thing we need to do is to dry that off. Now as we get closer to the foreground, we're going to see fewer numbers of peaks and a more gentle slope. Use a deeper colour and I'm thinking in terms of maybe having more like a hill, like that and a hill there like that. So now we have darker colors and smoother gradient of mountains. So these are less steep. In fact, I'm gonna roll that in a little bit there, have that there and pull it down with water. And pull it all the way down to the bottom. And on this section, it's getting darker as we get towards the front. Make sure that there's no sharp lines forming from the top and just pull all that water down. So we don't get a sharp edge. And now we're going to dry it with our hairdryer again. Okay, so for this next section, I'm going to be doing some salting techniques. So this is looking pretty dry. No, it's still a bit wet. We'll leave that to dry. It's not dry yet. That's showing up nicely. These, this Him Himalayan salt is looking great. And I really like that. It gives really good texture. The smaller salt gives a finer texture. So that's the salt flakes. Rub that off. These are the rock salt 
and then the salt out of the grinder, which is fine though. And now we're going to take off the paper for the, this was our wax paper. And I'm glad I did the darker color. You can see it on the yellow, but it's not showing up that well on the camera, but there is definitely the same texture on the yellow. And the plastic wrap, I'm going to do a little bit more because I'm not completely happy with how that's turned out. I'm going to actually re-wet this. I don't, don't see much happening here. So for the plastic wrap, I'm going to apply some more. Oh, look, that looks better wet. That looks better wetted like that. So just by putting some water on it, you can actually see the texture's better. That's better. It's a bit of a magic trick. Okay, well, we'll leave that. <laughs> Kind of and what I'd like to do is to get the idea of some foliage and I love what this pink Himalayan salt has done I think that's just done wonders it's going to look different on this side because this is the smooth side but I still think this texture is one of my favorites I like this texture in here as well and I like the plastic wrap texture so I think I'll use the pink salt and the plastic wrap as my two textured pieces here. Now the foreground is going to be a flatter hill again and I'm just going to have one hill kind of coming up maybe there, I don't want it right in the middle, maybe a hill just to there, just one hill. And I'm going to make it darker again and in order to make it darker I think I'm going to add a little bit of black. I think that's black. Let me test that. Yes that's black. So I'm going to bring in a little bit of black in with my blue. And to do that, I will need to do some mixing, some color mixing. So I'm bringing in a china plate from the kitchen, bringing in my black, bringing in lots of that blue, but not putting it all in the black because it'll end up too dark. What we're trying to do is make this a little bit darker, not too much darker yet. We'll get it really dark at the end. But as I bring in more black, you can see that that blue is becoming deeper. And that's what we want for this next layer. We want this to be a deeper color because it's closer to the foreground. And I'm going to have a hill that sort of goes very gently in that direction and stops down there. So we've got a hill there. So let's draw that down with some water, keep it nice and moist. This is coming all the way down. This is on dry paper, remember, so we need to add a bit more water into our brush. You can see this is darker again, which is what we want. We want this hill to appear to be reasonably dark. And you're going to see a good comparison of what it looks like with the white border and without the white border like we did in that other one there. So I'm just going to keep this very, very wet and very dark, nice and deep colours here so they stand out from the background. What's happened there? We've got a bit of overbrushing. I've got a bit overzealous there so I've got to mix that so that it fits in as, as the foreground rather than the background. Much softer hill. In fact, I think it's too too deep there I think it needs to go almost flat there I want it to make it almost flat so it doesn't have as much curve as the hill behind it pulling it down all the time so you don't get a sharp edge at the top And I'm going to put some plastic wrap and some of the Himalayan salt onto that. Squash up the plastic wrap, just however I want it to be squishy and squashy. And then I'm going to add my pink salt, my Himalayan pink salt onto that on the top. And this is going to be on my wet surfaces here 
and I might spray it a little just to get it activated again. There we go. I'm starting to get a little bit of things happening in there. And see if we can get the effect of real rocks on the hillside in this section here. So I'm going to let that dry and then when it's dry I'll come back in and we'll see what we've got. So in here, to make this into a sunset scene, we're going to add a little boat, just using my 2B pencil. You'd use a fine line black pen if you had one. But I'm just going to draw a little sailboat. And I'm going to draw a shape in the water, just very lightly. And make sure you do the shadow matching in the water and a bit of the mast. But it's like this, you can't see the whole thing, so it's coming down like that. Little seascape. We might even actually put a little bird over here too. Just to make it look a little bit more interesting. I just put a bird. And maybe another little bird down there like that. So this is pretty much dry now. This has dried out beautifully. Oh, I love the effect that we've got here. This is still a bit damp, so I'm going to dry that off with my hair dryer. It's still a bit moist. We could have left that a bit longer. But we'll grab the hair dryer and bring it in. So we can it and now we can see some texture on the hill. We're going to draw in our tree that we have created here. We're going to draw this tree and it's going to be almost black. I'm going to use my flat brush for this and I'm going to bring in my blue. Quite a bit of water to get it started but then we get it thicker and then I'm going to bring it right into the black. So we're using all that black so it's quite dark. You can see how dark that is. And I want to go darker even again, so a little bit more black. And a little bit more to get it quite dark. I want this to be very dark because it's in the foreground. And it gets almost a nice greenish tinge, which is nice too. This will look lovely over the blue. So we're just putting a little bit of black into that colour to make it super dark. You see, it's not too... Not too dry, not too creamy. Now, this is dry. So now we're going to add some trees in the foreground. And we might put another one here. This one might be higher. And you start with your stems. This is quite dry, so I need a bit more water in my paint and on my brush. See the consistency that I have on my plate there. And now we're going to start with our trees. I like to do a few at the top first. So it doesn't just have a point at the top. Then I like to turn them sideways. And then I like to move them out and push them all the way down. And I don't want to be able to see the stems of these. I want these to be fading away. A few on the side there. A few in the middle. And lots of spaces as well. You don't want to cover the whole thing in. And I want to make this a little wider as it gets down the bottom. Got some wide bits on the top. And we'll add to this one. I'm just going to go down the stem first. Make this one smaller. 
make it look like it's either a smaller tree or it's further away. Maybe just the top of a tree in here, just the top where the branches are pointing up. Just the beginning of a tree there. I like odd numbers so it looks better with three trees rather than two. And then this one we can just add a little bit darker in the center I'm going to put some pure black in the middle with no blue at all which will make it really dark in the middle of the tree and some pure black on this one in the middle and now we have our hillscape we have a bit of mist coming down you can see the mist is settling in the middle behind the second and third trees so let's dry this one off and see what we've got. Okay, now it's time to pull the tape off. I'm just going to be very careful taking this off so I don't tear it. I'm just going to hold it. You want to hold this low to your paper and go slow and low in my tips. You don't want to try pulling it off at once or it will rip. This is coming off beautifully. Nothing like a good tape reveal. So there's today's project finished. And you can see this little boat, the little seascape that I've drawn there. You can see how that looks. It's a little boat on the sea. Just by using our, our Crayola marker to make the sun and the ripples on the sea. I'm just putting a little bit of pink in the horizon it helps to define the line. And these look like puffy clouds. This was our wax proof paper. This was our plastic wrap. I'm a bit disappointed with that, so I'll show you some other plastic wraps that I've done. Now if you feel that the moon is a little bit light in the sky, you can actually get a paint pen and make that nice and white, give it a nice outline against the background. And that will come out beautifully clear. Just a few little spots you can make it look like snow if you want to but I just like to put a few little dots to show that it's in the foreground so that'll bring your eye right into those foreground trees and it'll bring hook bring them forward You can have some snow on your trees if you want to, or you can just leave them plain. I thought I'd sprinkle some snow on just for fun. So that's lesson two in our absolute beginner's watercolour class using budget supplies from Kmart and the dollar store. In our next lesson, we'll be creating different kinds of trees in a landscape, and I'll show you how to paint flowers and leaves for some florals.
I hope to see you there. Bye for now.